what is going on everybody so today we are at the infamous greens mill run in greenville north carolina uh, we put out there on facebook a couple days ago that we were going to come down here and do some tips and tricks try to get some new people in on the videos see what they're finding me and thomas have finally arrived we're a little late but we are here so throughout the day we're going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks you know what to look out for what to wear uh, try to answer all of your questions that i've received through pms and comments on youtube with that being said, we're going to get our gear on, we're going to head down to the creek, see who's here, and hopefully find a few fossils. I keep those right there. So real quick, I'll go over the sifter here. Uh, most people that hunt in this creek or fossil hunt in particular use a sifter. Uh, basically all it is is some tuba fours with some floaties on the side with some chicken wire nailed on the bottom. You know, you can go quarter inch or you can go half inch. I prefer the half inch because the smaller teeth fall through, you know, some of the smaller gravel falls through and you don't have to do quite as much sifting and moving around with your hands. Uh, but this is the majority of what people hunt with when they come to fossil hunting. And this is perfectly fine for a beginner. You can build this sifter for like nine bucks. Just go to Lowe's, buy your eight foot two before, buy your roll of chicken wire and some pool floaties, uh, and you'll be good to go. These are actually boat floats from Walmart. Uh, they just help in the deeper water, you know, so you can put more in the screen. But this is how you build a sifter. This is what they look like uh, for everybody that's curious and that's wondering. Really cheap, really easy to make. Today, we are gonna be using a flat-headed shovel and our fork. These are our fossil rakes that Thomas and I make. Uh, if any of you guys are interested in getting one or want to learn more about them, just shoot either of us a message on social media uh, or send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. We're gonna show you how to use these later on while we're in here. So right now, we've just got our shoes on. He's getting his stuff together, and we're gonna head down to the creek. All right, so we are in the creek. I've got a couple of tips to give you guys. Uh, as we were walking in here, there's a gentleman back here behind me that was barefooted. All of his kids appear to have shoes on, but if you are in Greens Mill Run, please be sure to wear shoes. Uh, Flip-flops, sandals, something to cover your bare feet. Shoes right here. So these are dive boots. Uh, mine are called Mars, M-A-R-E-S. Uh, I got mine off of Amazon bucks i think uh they're neoprene dive boots basically so you can get in cold water to keep your feet you know fairly warm if you're dressed out in a full wetsuit um just the easiest thing they slip on zip up on the side just easy to put on uh it's a lot better than tennis shoes you know you don't have to empty out the sand out of your shoes and pull the sole out and all that you just rinse them out with some water and dump the sand out get to it right here and see if we can locate a couple of fossils and if we can we're going to start walking down the creek and see if we can find some people and get their stuff on video also all right so i use a probe in green mill run now i don't typically use a probe anywhere else unless i'm bottle hunting uh the places that thomas and i go you don't really need a probe per se you can fill it with your feet so basically all i do is i walk along here and i stab it in the ground and I'm listening for a good hard gravel. Uh, I'll show you guys right here. Shh, listen. You hear that crunch? How it's, the probe easily goes through the gravel? You're listening for a spot that is heavily concentrated in gravel. Kind of like right there. You want a place to dig where your probe cannot easily punch through the gravel, where you have to put some force behind it to shove it through the gravel. Those thick spots of gravel is where the fossils are laying. So that's that those that gravel bed would be freshly out of a formation uh, and deposited into the creek, and that's what you're looking for. So if you don't have a probe, I think you can buy these at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, you know, for people that look for uh, septic lines and uh, you know electrical lines on the ground that think they're made out of fiberglass i made this one myself but you can also buy them at big box stores so get you a probe if you're planning on coming and looking in green mill run 
Okay, so you guys remember on the back of the tailgate, I was talking about the sifters and the forks that we use. So right now I'm gonna show y'all kind of how the forks we use work and the reason that we use them. So Thomas is gonna take a scoop here and kind of show you how it works. So basically it eliminates the need of a, oh, there's a piece of Indian pottery right Indian there. Potter. It eliminates the need of a sifter and a shovel. Uh, this is all in one. So this is the civil, the, this is the shovel and the sifter all built into one. So you take a scoop, you shake it out, you throw your rejects over to the side, you get you another scoop. It's quick, it's easy. Uh, it does have a little bit of workout, you know, behind it uh, because there is a little more added weight than just a fiberglass shovel, but it's well worth the money. Uh, it's, you know, well worth your time to try to invest in a rake. I don't have gloves on today, yep. but that's another thing I would advise because like I said, you get this glass, you have to be moving around, you never know. So. Yep, exactly right. If you're in this creek, please, please, please put some shoes on, wear some gloves, I know we don't have any gloves on right now. You should practice what you preach. I forgot them there in the truck. I may go back and get them. Um, but please, there's a bunch of glass in this creek. There's just a lot of stuff in here that will cut you. Uh, and you know, as nasty as this water is, it will cause infections and the shot's gonna be twice as bad than the cut is. So please make sure you wear your PPE when you come in this creek. I got my first toothy. Looks like it's a little sand tiger maybe. It's broke on the tip, but I'll definitely take it and yeah, see if we can find us another one. One of the biggest questions that I get asked all the time about this creek is, are there snakes here? So the answer to that question is yes, there are snakes here. This is their natural habitat and we are in their uh, territory. You know, nine times out of 10, if you don't bother them, they're not gonna bother you. Yes, there are snakes in here, but please don't be uh, scared or weary. Uh, you know, make that deter you from not wanting to come in this creek. This is a really nice place to bring your kids. You know, if they want to find some, some little teeth or some fossils, uh, just don't let the snake thing scare you away because it's nature. And of course, in nature, there's always critters, you know, that we're not used to seeing in our homes. So another tip for you guys uh, that I actually learned from Thomas back there is, so if you're in deeper water, like I am here, and you can't see the bottom and you don't have a probe, you can take your foot and you can twist your ankle back and forth and dig your toes into the sand. And you're feeling for that gravel. So once you feel that gravel in the deeper water, that's where your teeth are gonna be. So if you don't have a probe, you can use your foot in deeper water. Uh, it does work well, it does take some getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, I promise you'll get into some really good gravel. Okay, so probably the second biggest question that I get asked always to this, to this particular creek is where are the accesses? You know, where can I park without having my truck getting towed or whatever? So there's actually several access points here. You can park at the Green Springs Park that we were just at. Uh, you can park behind the Walcote School when they're not in session, when school's not going on, because that's where the buses park. Uh, you can come down to the Elm Street Park, or you can park in this grassy area that we're in here. Uh, there is a sign there that says towing and forest if not used for the recreation park But since we're in the creek, we're technically using the park. So you don't have to worry about your car getting towed uh, I will drop a map. I'll try to drop a map right now to all of the parking locations If anybody wants to screenshot it so you can have access points when you come to Green Mill Run all right, so I hope you guys can see me. We have come into a little tunnel here. This is another spot that I have personally found teeth in before. Uh, this is just between Elm Street Park and like the little grassy parking area that y'all saw on the map on ago. Uh, we have Benson, Grandma, and Carolina here. They're all digging fossils together. They found a few things. I'm just going to bring y'all here to show you what they found. A couple of bone frags. There's a little roll bag. Nice little one. Some kind of odd little bird bone, some tigers, some belly lines. There's a nice little Mako. Grandma just found. Actually, that's a little great white. Oh, yeah, man. Take that all day long. We're going to keep hunting, look around. That's one thing, man. You want to keep buying some teeth? I can't find them standing there, though. There you go. All right, well, we are done for the day. Uh, we came down here basically just to meet up with some people and kind of show up and give them some tips on, you know, how to find fossils and whatnot. Uh, didn't really do a whole lot of digging. Like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of time today. I have to leave and go get uh, my daughter from her 
her mother. But all in all, we've met a few people. Uh, we've shared some tips and tricks with them. We put a few people on some actual teeth. They did find some teeth that y'all saw, saw in the video. If you do like this content and you want to see more, or if you have any questions of any kind, please drop them in the comments. I'll try to do another video about six months from now or so uh, when it gets a little cooler on some more places that you can find fossils. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop me a thumbs up. Good luck on your adventures. See you guys next time. Take care.